service. We're just so thankful that all of you can join us, and we're just having a wonderful time here, just worshiping the Lord, and we just hope you can join us, and just really, just be thankful these days that we're, it's so different than normal, but we're just really want to be able to thank our God, and give thanks to the wonderful God and King who is higher than all the things that we're going through, so just a blessing to all of you this morning as we worship the Lord. to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. Let's do that again. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For he is good, he is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, his love endures forever. Forever, 
forever God is faithful forever God is strong forever God is with us forever forever from the rising to the setting sun his love endures forever by the grace of God will carry on his love endures forever to the setting sun his love endures forever and by the grace of god we will carry on his love endures forever sing praise sing praise sing praise God is strong. Forever God is with us. Forever. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. Forever God is with us. Forever. With a mighty hand, with a mighty hand and outstretched arm, his love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, his love endures forever. the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good. He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise.
worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship Your holy name. Rich in love and Your slow to.
We're all searching for answers, only you provide because you know just what we need before we say a word. Because you're a good, good father, it's who you are, it's who you are. Who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. You're perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us, yes, you're a good, good father. Who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Oh, we thank you, Lord.
Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, He is my song. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song, and you are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails the anchor on the waves oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins the echo of my days oh he is Welcome to New Life Assembly. We're glad that you have joined us this evening and uh, hope that all is going well. Just want to encourage you. um, You can always contact the church. 
to be able to uh, give us prayer requests or let us know whether there's anything specific that's going on that we can help you with. We just want to encourage you that we are a family. And uh, as part of a family, we try and look after one another. So please uh, don't pull back. And uh, please just remember to engage uh, with your family at New Life Assembly. All right. We have some announcements about morning prayer, 7.30 to 8.30, and a noon hour prayer between 12 and 1. Once again, if you have special requests, we, you can always let us know, and they can be prayed for. Kids. <laughs> kids, uh, there are ministry uh, opportunities for kids on uh, the website every Wednesday and every Sunday for all ages of kids. Uh, we just invite you to... Uh, uh, get in on that and uh, make sure that you're following along in our lessons that we're doing weekly. Uh, crazy Love is the subject uh, that the um, youth are taking up on uh, midweek recharge. And uh, they've been joining on Zoom and uh, having, uh, I'm sure, a great time on that. Overwhelmed by the relentless uh, God. You know, it is so important for us to really fully comprehend this message of God's love towards us. Genesis, we are continuing that study on Wednesdays. Um, and uh, on June 12th, this time it looks very interesting. I love the graphics. Uh, guess who? And uh, what's a human? What's missing? So I have no idea what those are, but I'm sure that just by the titles that they're going to be uh, an enjoyable uh, time for the youth on Friday. Uh, Sisterhood, June the 13th uh, and June the 27th. Join them, uh, uh, just connect together, ladies, and have this time of uh, sharing and uh, fellowship uh, as, you, as we continue this whole process of uh, I self uh, isolation and uh, social distancing. Continue to pray, please, for our parliamentarians, our prime minister, our um, premier Ford, and all of those that are at Queen's Park, and also for our town uh, officials as they continue to try to move ahead and uh, plan for what's next. Uh, we've got to remember our hospital workers, our grocery workers, our ambulance, our police, our, our fire, and all of the other municipal workers and storefront opener, uh, uh, owners who are opening up their storefronts at this time, that uh, they would just be given wisdom in the way and patience for all of us who have to access all of these services. I don't know about you, but I don't enjoy standing in line and, uh, or, you know, having, you know, I just want to go shop. But uh, we live in a different time at this point, so we're going to have to get used to that kind of stuff. All right, let's pray before we open up the word. So, Father, we just thank you for your presence. We thank you that uh, you know exactly where we're at during this time. You know all of our feelings, all of our emotions, all of our uh, I wish we coulds. Uh, Lord, help us with all of that. Help us to be obedient uh, to our governing uh, authorities, Lord, as you've instructed us to. Help us, Lord, to remember to pray for them, that you would give them wisdom as they go in these uncharted waters, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that um, for our congregation, that you would continue to remind them that they are part of a big family and part of uh, a family that cares about them. And so, Lord, help them to connect if they need to, Lord. Uh, help them to connect even if they don't need to uh, because we all need to be family to one another, Lord. And so, Jesus, uh, we ask now for your word. Lord, as we open it up, as we read it, that you will allow us to understand it, comprehend it, Lord. Help us. Um, thank you that we have more of an advantage um, than even the disciples did because we have your word. It's written down. We can study it. And uh, we know the outcome. 
And so we thank you, Lord, in your name. Amen. Amen. So we're looking at John chapter 14 this week, up, and I've entitled it Promises. So let's read together. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, uh, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and you and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. That will be enough for us. And Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you for such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? You don't, you don't, don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will even do greater things than these. Because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask me in my name. Let's try that again. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore. But you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On the day you realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourselves to us and not to the world? And Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, 
will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I'm going away and I'm coming back to you. If you love me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. I will not say much more to you, for the Prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me, but he comes so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Well, we um, are still in the story uh, of uh, the Last Supper. We are still at that moment where we are um, uh, seeing them around the table and Jesus is giving them further instruction. You will note once again that uh, John here is discussing things and revealing things that uh, we don't always see in the other synoptic uh, Gospels. So there's some very unique teaching that's going on here that we really don't see in the other parts uh, that describe the Last Supper. Jesus promises preparation for them in heaven. He is, uh, he's wanting them to know he's going to be looking after them. He once again clearly states his role as Messiah, uh, as the way to the Father. He once again clearly states his relationship with the Father. And he promises to continue uh, this relationship through the Holy Spirit. You see, Jesus is continuously trying to let his disciples know and us know that this um, event, that as he's going to the cross, is simply a moment in history. But the long-term event, the long-term relationship, though slightly changed, remains and, be, and gets taken to even a higher level than what it has been previously. And so we just see this story continue to develop. And in, in my father's house, he starts talking about, you know, where he's going. You know, Jesus knows exactly where he's going. In uh, chapter 13, verse 36, we see, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus replied, where I am going, you cannot follow now. But you will follow later. And so he's setting them up to understand that this is ongoing that it's not going to end with his death. And Jesus tries to reassure them that there is a plan. And, you know, that's, that's a good thing. When you're in leadership, reassuring everyone that there is a plan. You may not understand all the details. You may not have all the details. Uh, you know, and as we struggle to obey our leaders and a struggle to uh, listen you know, and, and try and make sense of this crazy world we're in. Realize that. They, our leaders are trying to reassure us that they are on top of this. And they are getting the information to be able to make right decisions. Well, Jesus, of course, has all of that information. He is trying to reassure them that he knows exactly what's going to happen. So he goes on and says, don't let your hearts be troubled. <laughs> Easy for him to say, right? He knows all the, uh, uh, everything that's going to go on. He, and, you know, his spirit's troubled because he knows what's going to happen. But he's trying to tell his disciples, guys, listen up. There is a plan. Don't let your heart be troubled. You don't need to be worrying about some of this stuff. It's going to happen and it's going to turn out okay. 
And he says, goes on, he says, hey, you believe in God. You believe in this God of Abraham. Believe also in me. You know, he's showing them all kinds of things. Uh, uh, you know, uh, about the relationship that he has with his father. He's re- going to reassure them that he's speaking and o- doing exactly what his father has told him to do. And he's saying, there's a place for you. You know, every one of us need to have a place to belong. And that's part of the sadness that we see in the world. And people are always trying to fit in. People are always trying to have a plan. Always trying to have a place where they belong. But you and I, we not only have a place to belong here on earth, his kingdom, but Jesus here is trying to promise them and make them understand that he is going to his father to prepare a place for them when they come to be with him. He says, I'm going, but I'm coming back. There's the long-term plans that Jesus here is revealing. He is not um, hesitating to share those plans with his disciples, even though they don't fully comprehend. And we've already talked about that very thing, that they just don't get it. They don't get it. Where you, where you will be where I am. You're going to be where I am. That's the promise that Jesus has given us. You see, this world is not our home. The kingdom of God doesn't end here on earth. It ends not in heaven. It ends in the presence of God. And we know the story of the, of the word where it says that there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth. Our final destination is not just heaven. Our final destination is in this new heaven and new earth. And we only have a glimpse of that very thing. But Jesus has said, look, I'm going to prepare this place. You're going to be with me. <laughs> you know the way to the place where I am going, he tells them. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, I don't, maybe he should have put a question mark on the end of it. I don't know. Because immediately, you know, there's confusion. <laughs> Thomas. And as I said before, yes, there was individual uh, disciples who spoke up boldly, but like Peter did. But here Thomas says, Lord, we don't know where you're going. <laughs> Why haven't they been listening? So how can we know the way? <laughs> the Lord understands sometimes we don't get it. He really does. And, and what a blessing, you know, in that this disciple, Thomas, expresses this confusion. And because, you know what, if one person's confused, there's a lot of us confused. That's why no question is dumb. It's always a good question, because if you don't know the answer, then there's other people who don't know the answer. And so Jesus speaks up, and he says very, very clearly. And this is one of the most famous uh, passages in the Word where Jesus clearly states, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Once again, Jesus declares his role, his mission, his purpose, He doesn't allow any question about it at all. He is determined at this moment, at this time, for all eternity to be very, very clear. He's the only way. The only way. He's tried to teach this before with the sheep gate and and being the good shepherd. But he's once again repeating this very critical role that his father has given him. 
And he goes on and he talks about his father and himself. If you know me, you know the father in verse 7. You see, once again, you know, there's a confusion amongst them about what this relationship is. And they, they still don't get it. And you know, folks, even today, we get confused about this because this Godhead thing is confusing. Uh, and there are many who make claims to have complete understanding of it, but truly there is a mystery surrounding this because it's not like us. And when we look at the mystery of the Godhead, there is a confusion and there is a mystery which our puny little minds, I think, are not going to understand until we see ourselves in heaven. But he wants them to know if you know the Father, or if you know me, Jesus says, you know the Father. Jesus and the Father are one. Knowing or seeing Jesus, you've seen the Father. And Philip speaks up. <laughs> Told you there was confusion. Lord, show us the Father. And, and that would be enough for us. <laughs> This is one of those. I'm sure Jesus must have a dents in the side of his head before he even went to the cross because of his disciples. <laughs> Banging his head against the wall because it's, we're so thick sometimes. And God's trying to teach us things and we don't get it. And he keeps repeating and repeating and repeating. And you know, God got so tired of repeating himself, eventually he gives the Holy Spirit to us. <laughs> Which makes it a little bit easier, I think, for us to understand, you know, all of these messages that Jesus is trying to give uh, to us to understand the relationship that he has with his Father. And he says, clearly, verse 9, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. It's not a physical thing that he's really talking about. He's talking about his behaviors, his love, his works, and all of those kind of things. He's trying to make clear that he has been doing what the Father wants him to do. He clearly states, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. In verse 10. I don't know how this works, but I know that Jesus proved all of this because of the works that he did and the words that he said. And he goes on and he tells his disciples, you know, this very thing, you know, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. It's not just Jesus. The Father is engaged in all of what Jesus was doing. And he could clearly claim that the Father is living in me. Do you know that we can claim that as well? That God is living in us through the Holy Spirit. And we'll go on and we'll talk about that. But last week we celebrated the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. And it's just interesting. You know, we're seeing, we're going to see this as we go along here. In fact, this promise here is given in chapter 14 about the Holy Spirit. God desires to work in us and to remind us of all that Jesus has taught. And verse 12, he says, Because I am going to the Father, whoever believes in me, will do the works I have been doing. And they will even do greater things than these. You see, he's trying to let them know, look, there's a purpose and a plan to why I am going to be leaving you. Um, it's so that this thing becomes bigger and greater. Um, you'll remember, he talked about a grain of wheat dying. And that there be a crop, that there be many seeds. He's really referencing once again this whole thing. That if he goes away, then greater things are going to happen. 
While Jesus was on earth, he had, you know, his disciples and, a, a, you know, a group of people around him and Israel. But now, the greater is the whole entire world that can experience Jesus. He is not limited physically anymore. He's not limited to just one nation. He has set down his life for a greater purpose. We see, and he says this, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You see, this is all about what it's all about. When we do things for Jesus, we are making God famous. We're demonstrating his great love to this entire world when we allow God to move through us and do the things that Jesus did. Now remember, what are the things that Jesus did? He loved on people. He accepted people. He forgave people. He encouraged people. He healed people. He interacted with people to bring them into the kingdom. This was our Jesus, and this is what he's called us to do. And part of the greater is not so much greater miracle as in greater communication. Just like now. Jesus could never have done this because this technology was not invented. And here we are being able to put this out on the internet, the world wide web. And it's an amazing thing. And God is touching hearts and souls. And the Father is being glorified in the Son. And Jesus picks up, if you love me. You know, it's really important for us to understand that there is an if. Uh, we don't believe in universalism. We don't believe that, uh, you know, now that Jesus has died on the cross, everyone's on their way to heaven. There is a place and a need for commitment. If you love me, he says in verse 15, keep my commands. Got to remember, what are his commands? They're pretty simple. And it's all around love. Love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. You know, and, and he's going to reiterate this whole thing once again, as he did uh, in chapter 13 about love one another. But in verse 21, the one who keeps my commands is the one who loves me. You see, it's important for each and every one of us to recognize that and realize that. That it is not just an event. It is an ongoing, continuing commitment to follow Jesus and his commands. Of love. And yes, we grow in that. We never start out, you know, with this thing perfected and never will have it perfected. It's an ongoing struggle and growth. And that's why Holy Spirit works in us so that we can do these things. In verse 23, he says, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. You see? He's getting it narrowed down, his commands and his teaching. He teaches about, you know, avoiding sin, staying away from sin. He teaches about these things. He teaches about having to have forgiveness in our lives. In verse 28, he once again, he says that if you love me, then you would be glad that I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. Just reminding them. He is going home. And that they should rejoice at his going to be with his Father. Next thing that he brings up is the Holy Spirit is coming. He says, I'm not, basically, I'm not going to leave you alone. Because if I leave you alone, you're going to fail. <laughs> right? We all know that. You know, we ignore the Holy Spirit, we ignore God, and we fail. In verse 16, he says, I'm going to give you another advocate to help you 
and be with you forever. You see, Jesus is going away here, but he is sending by the Father one who is with us forever, the Holy Spirit. You know, a lot of churches want to talk about Jesus being with us. And the reality is, Jesus is not with us. The reality is, the Holy Spirit is actually with us. Now, Pastor Bob, you're splitting hairs. No, I'm just telling you what the Bible really is telling us in regards to how we interact with God now at this moment. Yes, Jesus had a mission to bring forgiveness to us, to bring us into relationship with the Father. But this ongoing relationship has been enabled by the sending of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth. And it's only for followers, only for those who are following and keeping the teachings and the commands of Jesus. You will know him. We know when the Holy Spirit comes and, and, and works in us or corrects us or helps us and does all the things that he does to keep us on the, the road in the kingdom. He lives within us. That's what the Bible tells us. Even here, the disciples are being told, you know what, you'll, you'll know him. Don't be afraid. Remember, you've got to remember this whole context that Jesus is trying to reassure his disciples and to not be afraid about the coming events that they still are clueless about. And he will be with you. He will be with you. Holy Spirit desires to be that advocate that brings us to the understanding of Jesus, the understanding of the Father that brings us into the throne room so that we can pray. He's going to teach you. He will remind you of all the things that Jesus has done and God's great purposes towards you. You know, sometimes we forget those. We forget that God uh, really really wants to engage you in relationship. God wants this relationship more than you even want it. And that's why the Holy Spirit has been given to us, so that there can at, be, at least be the same kind of, of uh, uh, reciprocal desire. This Holy Spirit builds that desire within us to seek the Lord. Have you noticed that? That the word, uh, the, the Bible becomes something that we, we, ha we have a thirst to read it and a desire to seek the knowledge of who Jesus is and how we can have relationship with the Father. Those are what, that's the Holy Spirit working within you. Well, Jesus hasn't stopped here. He now wants to go on and says in verse 27, Peace I leave with you. Peace. Now this peace is uh, not as the world gives, he says. It's my peace I give you. The peace of knowing who he was in the Father. That he was on this mission. That in, even in the midst of, of knowing where he was heading in the next days. That he still had this peace and reassurance. That the Father... And he were good. God wants you and me to have that. He talks through, um, through Paul. Writes down, you know, there's no condemnation. There's no condemnation to those who are called according to God's purpose. He reminds us that we can, even though we blow it, we can quickly go to the Father and, and say, Father, forgive me in Jesus' name. And it's done. And it's over with. And the Holy Spirit comes and strengthens us to overcome. And in all of that mess, in all that devastation of this, this thing that goes on in us, we still can have the peace knowing that God is with us. The Holy Spirit will never leave us. 
That Jesus, he said, will never leave us. That the Father knows you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, he repeats. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't be afraid. Everything that's coming ahead is going to look so scary. And you're even going to fall. He's already told Peter he's going to fall and fail. And yet, He's saying, my peace I give to you. It's not going to go away. You can access it at any time. We make that mistake. We don't always allow God to give us the peace that he wants us to. But it's always there. It's always a prayer, a whisper away, saying, Lord, come, I need your peace. In the middle of this turmoil, the middle, middle of this confusion, I need your peace, Lord. And that's available to you and me, even in these times when, of confusion. The testimonies of Christians throughout the world, being able to give testimony to the fact that the peace of God rushed over them and overwhelmed them, despite the danger that they were in. Telling them all this, so that when it does happen, speaking of his death, you will believe. You see, the big point here with the disciples is that they're still on shaky ground. They've been with Jesus for three years. They're still not getting it. They're still asking what we would consider to be dumb questions. And they're fragile. They don't have the Holy Spirit at that moment. They're going to be having to wait. We see the devastating effects that all of these events are going to have on the disciples. We know. We've read the Bible. But they don't know. And he's saying, I'm telling you all these things so that the trouble and the, and the, the mess up that you guys are going to make will not be permanent. All of these things I'm telling you are going to be brought back to you so that you can experience this peace that I am leaving for you to have. The purpose, you see, he's constantly reminding him. Our purpose and his purpose so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Wouldn't that be great to be able to put on our tombstones? I heard the voice. I obeyed. And we, we have glorified God. Meaning those who saw the things that we did. That's what Jesus was doing here. And what he wants us to do as well. It's always about the bigger picture, not just our individual story. Our individual story is always meant to impact other people. Never let your story go untold. Let others know what Jesus has done for you so that the Father in heaven may be glorified. Well, that brings us basically to the end of this particular chapter. We're, you got to remember, we're still coming up to the end of, uh, uh, we're still in that upper room. We're still in that room where the Last Supper was celebrated. But um, he acknowledges this ongoing, this upcoming battle uh, that he is going to be facing and that as he um, has spoken these things, he basically says, well, that's enough for now. It's time to leave. He makes a comment about the fact the devil has nothing in him. And he basically moves from this place and heads towards the garden. Um, they've finished celebrating the Passover in this room. Um, he has reassured his disciples that the mission is not at an end, but will continue. And that heaven and the Holy Spirit are still to be experienced. We see him just, you know, continue 
uh, to emphasize that there will remain a relationship even after he dies on the cross. You see, the disciples had gotten so used to the idea that he was there and going to be there that this death, him being taken away, was just going to devastate them and just, you know, push them away and put them into despair. And that is kind of where we're leaving him at this stage in chapter 14. Chapter 15 picks up from there in further teaching. And we're going to be doing that, you know, as we continue on this. We need to recognize that Jesus never pulls away from this whole idea of relational um, experience with him, with his Father, and with the Holy Spirit. And today, if you don't know Jesus, if you have not experienced this relationship, or maybe you've been wandering away like the disciples, and, or confused, or, you know, just things. Even today, you can come and say, Jesus, I need your help. Holy Spirit, come. Flood me with your peace. Come. Work in me. Restore me. Remind me of this great thing that Jesus has done for me. And you who have never had this experience with Jesus, what a joy you have yet to experience. He wants to come in and give you his peace. You know all the turmoil and everything that you're, you've experienced in your life, the mess up, the, and you look at your life and you shake your head and say, what is this? Why? Is, you know, some of you might even be thinking, you know, there's no point in even living. Let me tell you that Jesus' peace, what he does on the cross, changes your life when you accept it and say, I want you as my Savior, Jesus. I want you to control my life. I want you to show me how to live. I want to be able to obey your commands of loving God and loving others and following your teaching. And if that's you today, all you need to do is say, Jesus, I want to be yours. Help me. Help me to be all that you want me to be in this world. Help me to learn. Help me to follow your teachings. Help me to love. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that I might follow you for the day, rest of my life. That can be you. And that's all you have to do. Then get in touch with us as one of the pastors so that you know, we can help you in this journey. He doesn't want you to be alone or try to do the journey alone. That's why he created the church and created pastors and teachers and evangelists and, you know, brothers and sisters. That we do this walk together. Let's pray. So, Father, I thank you. As we see this mission that Jesus is on, the promises of heaven, promises of the Holy Spirit, the promises of your presence with us. Lord, we are just so thankful. Help us, Lord, to take full advantage of all these things that you've done for us and given to us. And that we might walk in your peace and your joy during these times. Lord, you know the turmoil of this world. You know it all. And you are the answer. You are the answer for all of this turmoil. Lord, give us your peace. And we thank you now. In Jesus' precious name, amen. God bless you. If uh, you need to get in touch with us, please, it's uh, 737 2843. Uh, you can t get touch base with us through the website as well. Send us an email. Uh, we'd be happy to uh, correspond with you and get in touch with you. Um, God bless you this evening.